Welcome to the skunk work. Alright, this is a new project here. Can you see what's going on here? Can you redesign this to make it a better mouse track? Just look at the video or in the comments. My work sets the industry free. I'm a machine. Hard working man. Welcome to um, skunk works here. Alright, I put out that video asking you guys what this is and um, redesign it, re-engineer it and a lot of you guys dropped the ball that tells me that you have no idea how to re-engineer anything and you had no imagination because you didn't write in the comments what it was so I'm going to have to help you guys out so here we have master cans CAD CAN. Now, a lot of you guys don't even know what CAD CAN means. C-A-D, Computer Aided Design. Alright, so here's where I came up with. We're going to do this. Because a lot of you guys couldn't figure out how to re-engineer anything. So, I'm going to help you out here. So, we're going to redesign that on Master CAM here. And so let's get going. Let's start. So first thing we got to do is you should always know which quadrant are you working in. So when you do that, it's you hit your F9. Here's a quadrant. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to create our crosshairs. So we can work off our lines. So when I create a line, uh, let's start out horizontal from the origin. And we're going to go there. It doesn't matter how long it is here from the origin come out now when I go um, vertically create a line from the origin there's the origin and I will go up see how it's white now white and then it'll turn green there we go now these are all individual lines. We want to join these lines. So we're going to hit uh, modify, join. Now look at here, you see how that turns white and over here is green. Now when I join this line with this line and uh, let me see here, modify, join. And when you touch that one and this one, now you see that? The whole line is white. That tells you it's uh, all one line. See that? All one line. All right. So now we got our two lines there on our center quadrant. So now we are going to create this line here and the top line here, which is four inches. I'm gonna do this first. So, let's uh, create that. So this is our four inches in height. So we're going to uh, offset, and we're going to X form, offset. We're gonna move it, and we're gonna, actually we're gonna copy. No, we're gonna move it. We're gonna move that exactly half of four. So if you don't know how to do math, you don't need a calculator with MasterCAD. All you do is four minus two equals two. So I'm gonna hit, because our height is four inches, so four minus two equal. There's the answer two. So you don't need a calculator. Don't worry about all these other lines. Hit okay. Now, I'm gonna hit this down here. There. Now from here to here is two inches. So now we need to do the same thing. Select a line. We're going to select this line. Indicate the direction. Uh-oh. We did that the wrong way. Now we're going to offset again. Now from here we want to go up four inches. So we want to offset that four inches. Hit OK. Oh, but now we want to copy it. We don't want to move it. Or else we just not move that to here, but when I don't have this line, so copy. Okay. 
there you go there's the line so from right here to here is uh four inches those that don't trust me analyze between points this end point and this end point and you can see down here it says four inches see that so all you guys that don't trust have trust issues all right so there there are four inches now a width here it's going to be four inches four inches see here we did the height now we're going to do four inches width and up here we got one and three quarters so we're going to have two of them so let's get this one here so we're going to x form offset and we're going to offset it again four minus two equals two or four divided by two your way and we're going to copy that hopefully yep and then here here okay there these two are four inches now when i do here the direction and then uh basically we're going to do the same four inches which we don't want to do so we back on go offset now we need to do 1.750 divide that by two. There it is, 875, seven eighths. So we touch this to here, here to there, there. Now we got our one and three quarters and our four inches here. So now we need to offset this top one inch down. So we're gonna offset one inch, hit okay touch this I'm gonna go down there now don't get confused so many lines in there all right don't get lost so here we offset that one inch we got our four inch height we got a four inch wide and we got a one and three quarter on the top all right so that's what it looks like don't get confused don't get lost all right so now let's uh, modify make it a little bit more clearer so when i hit modify trim um we could do two entities or one entity so let's do two we're going to trim that to that this to this nope wrong one this one to this one let me see computer slow down one entity, this, that way, um, something's not working here. All right, computer just froze up. Well, that's the first, the computer, she froze. Okay, let me see what I can do to unfreeze it. Undo? Yep. Well, I didn't expect that. Modify trim one entity. This to that. And let's try delete. Delete. Only. Line. Well, take a look at that. Okay, so I want to undo that and then modify trim. Let's say two entities. This one, this one. There we go. All right, so here's our four inches. Now here's our two inch. Now, that red trim two entities, modify trim two entities. This one, that one, this one, that one. All right, so here's one and three quarters, four inches. Here's a one inch. So when I create a line, create a line, uh, let's see what's good here. Uh, interception. 
points. And we're going to create intersection. See that? Intersection of this line and that line to this endpoint. And intersection of this line and that line to this endpoint. All right. So let's take a look at what we got. We got this. We got that one inch. Now we got a four inch. And we got this angle here. See, so you did not have to calculate what that angle is. It already does it by offsetting one inch. And from that intersection to this angle here. All right, so let's uh, let's clean it up a little bit. Let's get rid of this line. We don't need this anymore. So we do uh, hit delete this one. Okay. You know this thing's still not working. You're not zooming in or out. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Well. Guess we don't need that. All right, so we have this. Now this thing here, we need to uh, cut this right here. So let's uh, X form. No, nope. let's uh, modify trim two entities. You want to try this one to this one, this one to this one. There we go. Now, does it look like that? We got that one and the angle, and now we do that down there. So we can get rid of these two here. So delete this and this, and there we go. Now we got lines in the middle, do we need them? I don't know, maybe. Huh. That um, zoom is not working for me to screen okay so something wrong with the mouse all right so there we got that 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 now this sharp corner here don't like so we need to soften that so we need to create a fillet so what size I right, create you know x form and nope, modify, fill it, radius. Uh, well, that says down here, you see that? 250. Let's just see what that looks like. Oh, look at that. I wish I had my zoom. Uh, screen zoom. How's that? That looks pretty nice. Nice soft radius. All right, we do undo, and we go a radius. Let's go a little bigger. Uh, three, three seventy-five. See how that looks. How's that? Nice soft curve. I I like that. All right, so when we hit fit the screen, see that you can hardly see it there. So. We're gonna do the same thing here and here. There it is. Now, if this one requires a little bit bigger. So we're gonna go what? Let's try uh, 625, that's 5 eighths. Let's see how that looks. Whoa, look at that. I don't know, is that good or bad? That's too much. So let's try um, radius. Let's try half inch. And, I don't know, it still looks too much. Let's try, that was half inch. All right, let's try 250, quarter inch. Look at that. That looks pretty nice. Uh, I think it's still too much. Uh, 180, 125. Look at that, I like that. 
Well, let me see something here. Let's see, uh, 187 and a half. That is 316. You got to learn these decimals and fractions. Look at that. That's 316, and this is quarter inch. I like this 316. What do you think? You like this one or this one? Put it in the comments. Which one looks better? I think this one. So, let me see if I... Uh, to do this there and now we're going to delete that little radius there now fit the screen okay now we got the top and we got the bottom we got our radius we got our angle we got the little fillet right here so now what now we need these venting ports right here okay so again the venting ports looks like I have to put them anywhere I want so I want to see where what looks good so I'll uh, create a rectangle Uh, let me see here, uh, sketch. Now I'm gonna go back up, I'm gonna go one point. Uh, I really don't know, what are those things? Let's try a quarter inch, 250 by, uh, 250 high and how long? I guess one inch sounds pretty good. How's that? One inch is too long. So let's back up. One inch. One inch is too long. How about half inch? How's that? That looks, that looks pretty good. All right. So. Let's figure out where we want it. Do we want to put it right on this edge here? That is right on there. If I go zoom. <laughs> That's no good. I can't see it. All right, so we know what that is. If I to clear that, how can I clear it? Undo. See, my mouse isn't working. <sighs> delete. It's not a delete, it's a ghost. It's a ghost pattern there. Ah. Uh, Unzoom, zoom, analyze. My goodness. Let's see if I could do that and then go back to fit the screen. See, it was just a ghost pattern. My, uh, the wheel on the mouse isn't working to clear it out. So, but that isn't a problem. All right, so create a line horizontal from, from what? from the end point. So when I create the end point of the bottom to the end point there. All right. Now when I create, uh, I don't know, create a rectangle. One point, it's already there. You think half inch is too big? Uh, 250, 375, four, uh, four, uh, 716, that is 437.5. Again, you got to know these decimals, how to convert them. That's 716. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. So we're going to put that right in midpoint. 
All right. That looks good. So let's analyze this. Analyze between endpoints. That one and that one. Zoom. There and there. Look at that. Why is that one higher? Uh, okay, so that is um, the length is one two six eight. So that is almost like one eight, one twenty five. I guess one eight well, sounds good. So let's uh, delete this one. Fit the screen. I'm gonna delete that now. Let's see how we could do this. We want to, we know this width here is 250. So 250 plus 18 spacing. So 2 plus 1 is 3. That's 375, 3/8. Or if you have a um, quarter inch plus 18 is what? 375. 250 plus 125, 375. So we're gonna modify, offset, and we're gonna copy, and distance is uh, 375. Okay, so let's see if, so let a line and arc occur to offset. I wish I had to go a little bit bigger. Zoom, undo. And see what happens here. Nope, undo. Well, from here to here, I'm gonna back up. <sighs> Offset, one eight, copy. Uh, offset there, offset there, and I'm gonna offset that. What? Two fifty. Okay. Let me see. Create a line horizontal between endpoints. Where's the endpoints? Endpoint. 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 Now you see how it's still white? You have to let it turn green. There. Uh, let me see if I can find a file. Nope. Modify. No. Nope. X4. Screen. Here we go. Screen. Clear colors. Clear colors. Now look at When I hit clear colors. See that color right there? See? Turn all green. That's a ghost fountain right there. That so let me see. There we go. There. Now see can we squeeze one more over here? I don't know. Modify. Nope, it's X formed. Offset. We need to go one eight. See? And now offset two fifty. Ooh, just barely made it. We're gonna zoom right on the edge, so it makes it 
really good. Okay, now create a line horizontal with endpoints. There and there. Turn green. There and there. I'm going to touch. Try touching that and that, that and that. Now let's go to screen, clear colors, clear colors. There we go. All right. So there's the, the little port windows, the venting. And they go all the way around. Now, now uh, here, um, delete. This line here, I don't need that anymore. And we don't need that line. F9, don't need that. Okay. So, yeah, it looks just like that. We had that opening, bonnet, angle, one inch tab. So it looks just like that. All right. Now, uh, let's cut this. Now remember, this is our smallest radius here, which was what? I don't know. So we hit uh, zoom. Analyze. Ang angle, no, analyze. Radius, I guess. I analyze that. All right, see down here? Radius is 375. So that's our smallest, um, smallest radius, 375, uh, fit. And what is this? That's 187. So that's 375, three eighths. Hmm. <sighs> What's half of three eighths? Um, three seventy five, one eighty seven, it's three sixteen. So we have to use a three sixteen end mill, and I would do all of this. 3 eighths radius. So 3 eighths times 2 is 5 eighths, 625. So we just see that here. Create an arc. Um, point radius and 375. See that? Right there. That blends in real nice. So I had to come here with, I believe the 625. Um, Cause three eighths times two is 375. Oh, that's sorry. That's a radius. Dammer is three quarters. All right. So the dammer is three quarters. So we have to use a three quarter end mill. So let's delete this. Okay, so now, oh man, I wish I had to shrink it. My mouse is not working. Here, screen, unzoom. Let's try, it. there we go. All right, that seems to be big enough. Now remember, our F9 quadrant is in the center. So when the ML starts, it's gonna start from here and go out. So where we want it to go from here 
The best place to start could be here or here. So, let's create some G codes. So, let me see here. All right, so now, two path. I'm gonna do contour, chain, here. Yeah, that's like you went this way. So, by going this way, end mill rotates in the clockwise, and we're going this way, we are climb milling. Do we want to climb mill? No. We want to conventional mill, so we have to go this way. So we gotta change that direction. Reverse. There, done. Now, right click, go to library, get a three quarter end mill right here, three quarter end mill. Okay. Uh, let me see. Oh. Uh, I'll say two feet rate plunge rate sequence the corner to display contour now here all right so our dip is going to be a negative so we're going to go negative point uh 625 so we have clearance and we're going to do a lead in and lead out the length here we're gonna go tangent or perpendicular I think tangent would be nice and the length gonna go about 30 and here 60 same thing here 30 and 60. Could do 90, but what a nice sweep. Okay. Hit that. Uh, we're going to do multiple leads. We're going to do um, two rough passes and one finished pass. Finished pass, I always like to do 15,000. Or even 10, but um, I think I'll, I'll do 10. 10,000. All right, when it does the, all those, I'm gonna keep the tube down. Spacing, uh, depends what kind of material we're gonna cut. 100,000. Uh, nah, I guess that'll be all right. All right, we hit OK, and there it is. See that, 30? Remember, 30, 60%, 30%, 60%. So now when we go to operations, we're going to um, back plot, and we're going to step it. So you see how it started way down here, not touching anything. It's, it's in the air. The mill drops down and then it starts to sweep it at that 30% and 60% angle. And we're going to leave 100,000. See that? You never want to cut it all in one shot. Not even leave 10. 10,000 there for cleanup because that's just too much, too rough for the end mill, and you're gonna damage your part. All right, so there, and then it's gonna sweep around again here. See, remember, it did a tangent, so you don't get that little uh, end mill uh, divot that you punch right into it. That's what a lot of you guys don't understand when you're machining. Now it's going to cut the. It already cut one hundred thousand. It's going to cut another hundred thousand and leave only ten thousand for cleanup. See, so right there, we still got ten thousand clearance right there between 
there. Now you got to get your inmost and your radius correct. You see how it blends here and there beautifully because you got the right kind of radius on your end mill. Now here is going to cut my 10,000 cleanup. And you notice the direction it's going. It's cutting conventionally. The end mill cuts clockwise and you're cutting into the material. Not like the other way it was going. You're cutting against it, which is climb milling. You're climbing. All right? You got to learn the difference between conventional and climb milling. And there's the 10,000 now. I'm going to go sweep it back and finish. And back plot is complete. Now, let's see how long it took. It took 6 minutes and 45 seconds. You need to work with your fees and speeds to do better in that. So, there you go. Now, let me see here. We're going to clear out of here, and we're going to post this. All right. Now, I'm going to post it. Here's my the post that I'm using for a bridge port. This is the post. Now, it depending on what kind of machine you have, there's uh, many different posts in here. All right, so I don't want to change it right now. So we we had the post here, and we're going to hit OK. Now we had to give it a name, the NC file, the mirror control. So let's what we want to call this. Um, um, don't know. It just call it um, hot plate. I don't know. Hot plate. P L A T E. All right. So you have to give the file a name. Save. Now look. Look at here. Looky, looky, looky. Here's your G code. All right. Look at all the G codes. Now. Remember this little block here? That means end the block. Finish. Here, Y O M O M O two <laughs> means it's the end of the program. So basically, you should know how to read all these things here. You see here, you have an I and J. You know what I and J's are? Those are your radius. All right. And here, G O one. That's a linear movement going in a straight line. And uh, this, um, let me see here, that's a Y, and uh, X, and there also should be uh, up here in the beginning, you see? Now the first N, that's your block number, the N number. These numbers here are your block numbers, all right? And you to see the spacing. The, it's not one, two, three, four. No, always have to have spacing there, because in case you need to add a line or edit it, you need your own block number to put it in there, to squeeze it in there. All right. So then you have here. See a GO. That means wrap it. A G ninety. That's your linear pattern. Your um, incremental. X Y. The T is your two, two number one, and M is your uh, function, and an O six, and that's um, as you all to here should have an S somewhere here. Fee rate, fee rate is eighty six, and uh, the S should be somewhere here. Which I don't see it. S is your your speed. So if you want to change anything, you could just overwrite one of these. Or if it's not there, like the S is not here, I would just enter in here by using your down arrow. And then just squeeze it in there like a fee rate. I mean, not a fee rate. 
um, spindle speed. So I had to override that and put it in there. All right, so here's all my G codes, all right? Like I said, if you're doing like 3D printing, those 3D printers, it, it requires G codes, all right? So you need to make these G codes. You need to understand what the G codes mean. Once that's done, we uh, turn that off. Go down here, and let's see here, and we to uh, verify that, and we're going too fast, let's go down there, and let's see here, there it is, see that, now isn't that slick, now, like I said, you have to take this G codes and put it in your 3D printer. As long as the language and the communication are the same, you have to um, print this all the way around with the hollow spacing in between. But you see that? Now, if we want to do the little ports windows, we could do that. All we do is add on to here. So, hit OK. Uh, these so this is 250 but you to see these corners these will be a problem all right because whatever end mill you use an end mill has a radius and these are square corners all right so late we could uh, change these square corners to a very fine radius or we could create little round corners here because we go in there we have to go in there with a very very small end mill to give the illusion of a square corner but that just puts risk on breaking depending how thick this material is what kind of material it is, it could break the end mill. So let's just say, let's, let's call this something small. What can we use there? Um, 316, 116. That's a very small end mill. So uh, I'd probably use a 316 end mill. That's about as small as I want to go. So let's uh, modify me. Um, I guess modify, fill it radius into the radius. We're gonna use a, a three sixteen m mill, so that would be three sixteen divided. Up, oh, I knew that was gonna happen. Point one eight seven divided that by two, because we want the radius of a diameter of three sixteen and. That looks really big. Actually, whoa, I hope they didn't delete that line. We'll see later. No. Look at that. That looks pretty decent. Okay. So there we go. Look at that, see that? That means I deleted this line here. So let's fit the screen. But that's not a problem. If you think that's a problem, then you have a problem. Create a line vertical between endpoints. And we choose Oh I can't see. Okay. That one. And I wish that mouse would work. 
and there. Okay. And let's uh, clear screen, clear colors. And um, fit the screen. There we go. All right. Uh, hopefully they didn't screw up our um, G codes, but I won't know till I get the I right, two pad when they hit pocket. And we're going to chain. down again it wants to go up I'll just show you the difference because all you have to do is hit reverse but I'm going to show you it's not climb mill now there now I hit done now uh this is going to have to be here. Get two from the library. Now, remember, it's a 316, 187. Now, that is... Uh, two, number two. See, they're all already. See, number two. That's two, number one. Two, number two. Okay, so here's all our feet rates, plunge rate, reaction, two diameter, the program, sequence of number, and the spindle speed is running at 2,852 RPMs. All right, cooling off. So I'm going to go here, pocket. We're going to go to a depth of negative, always in the negative number. Um, point six twenty five. You see up here, machine direction, climb milling. We're not conventional milling over here. All right. So additional finish operation. Uh, leaf stock. Attraction. Uh. I'll leave all that there. I go here. Now, we're going to do a zigzag panner or a constant overlay. Spiral one way. So, I'm going to go round and round. But you got to understand these right here. Especially this one. This takes up a lot of G codes. So, it makes it run slow. This one and this one is the fastest. This one's decent overlay. Starts in the center. So, again, here's where you need to know, be part of a machinist. If you use one of these, it's always going to start on the corner of your part. So that means when the tool goes down, it's going to mark your corner. And it could overshoot by, because when the, the end mill plugs in, you know, you're forcing the material and the end could rock. So the best thing to do is have it enter in the center where it doesn't matter because it's going to get cut off anyways. So if this one has too many G codes, these same thing here. So this one would be the best choice here. Number of passes, I would choose two. We can't say keep the tool down because we do that, we're going to cut all the way across. The tool has to go up and down to jump. All right. And same thing with the lead in and lead out because we choose this one, we're going to start in the center of that hole. So we don't need to lead in and lead out. If we were going to use one of these, then yes, we have to lead in and out. So we're going to hit OK. And there it is. See that? So basically now, I have to do the same thing to all of these. So when I hit pocket, chain, and we want it to go up. Should have done this to all of them. Done. When I hit the same thing, negative, 
625 and I would hit the same one two passes okay there you go see that now a lot of you are saying why didn't you just do this one first and not these well what if I didn't like that I would have wasted all my time doing all these and I was going to delete that anyway so instead of just deleting one but when you add these on, like you saw they do it rapidly, it just adds it on. So all these will be cut as one. So we go to uh, operations. And you see here. And then you see this X here. That's because remember I deleted that line. So to fix that, I would have to um, recontour number one. Which isn't a big problem. But you can see here, it did that first pocket and then it did the other one. See? So, we'll do a black uh, back plot and we'll run it. Now, I want you to pay attention where the end mill falls on the first spot. Oh, uh, okay, that's my mistake because I, I didn't tell where I wanted to start. So we'll just hit run. And uh, let me see here. Unzoom. Let's see if I can do that again. Okay, there. Now, we uh, should go to the second one. Oh. Nope. I didn't join them. So let's uh let's get out of here. See see the check mark right there? The check mark means it's only gonna do this one. So select all. Now you see the check mark there? Check mark there, check mark there. Now if I didn't want it to do the first one, I could just uncheck it. But let's do them all. Okay, so when I do uh Back plot. Now, it should do all of them. Now, you see that? From here, the spindle goes to there. I want you to see first step. Fit to screen. You can see all the clearance in there on the green, how it's not touching. As you see another yellow line, see? That yellow line means the email went up, went across, and then dropped down, 58625. You don't see that yellow line, that just means um, you just cut across the, your surfaces where you didn't want it to cut. That's why you gotta know when to keep the tool down and when not to. See that it did all the roughing and now it's doing all the finishing. And this saves the life of your tool. Keep it sharp. So there you go. See that? Now, that I took down here, if you just see, nine minutes and 57 seconds. All right, so there we have the check mark, check mark, check mark. That was where, remember, I deleted that and they repaired it. So now when I hit post, there's our post. This is the communication. So if you're doing like 3D uh, printing, you had to have the information of the 3D printer there so it, all the language communicates now this just means we're using a 316 187 end mill 
And those corners you can see right there where it's saying it's 3187. So if I would just modify it like the M or take out that five tenths, you would not get this cutter compensation successful. Not successful. That's all that means. Alright, we're gonna add it on to the hot plate. Save. Already is this overwrite? Yes. Now here, look. Remember your G codes? There you go. Look at that. It's even longer. See the number? If you remember the original, it, it wasn't 344. Those are a line of codes. Alright. So now we're going to hit um, verify. And there you have it. Let's see what happens here. Those are the little slot windows. And the solid green is the spacing in between the windows. The part that we did not want to cut out. Now I could increase the yellow, the green so you can see the full slots. And that's just on the stock selection here. But uh, I think you guys get that part. See right here, it's the stock shape box cylinder file. All I have to do is increase these numbers here, and uh, it will um, show you the little slots in there, but. You don't need to know that. You just want to see how you draw it up and create your G codes. All right, so there it is. Uh, mouse just froze up again. But there, there's your um, drawing and we just show it to you. All right. Next time I put another one of these up there, do participate. And I'll do your drawing with your G codes and your, you know, design, reverse engineering. And then you, all you have to do is copy it or tell me you want a copy of it and I'll send it to you. All right. This is uh, Jay from the Blue, uh, Jay from the um, Skunk Works. All right, this is Jay from Skunk Works signing off.